Are you ready to transform your summer into an epic splash-tastic adventure? Say goodbye to wasteful, single-use water balloons and hello to the ultimate in reusable, eco-friendly fun with reusable water balloons. Check out the link in the video description to get yours on Amazon today. Their high-profile marriage began with a fairy tale wedding, followed by the births of two princes, but ended in a bitter divorce. Lady Diana Spencer, aged 20, married Prince Charles, then 32, at St. Paul's Cathedral on July 29, 1981, in front of 3,500 guests. Hailed as the wedding of the century, a record-breaking 750 million people in 74 countries across the globe tuned in to watch the event on television. I remember being so in love with my husband that I couldn't take my eyes off him, Diana told writer Andrew Morton. I just absolutely thought I was the luckiest girl in the world. He was going to look after me. The jubilant occasion marked the first time that a British citizen had married an heir to the throne in 300 years. Charles and Diana had announced their engagement five months prior to the wedding, on February 24, 1981, with an exclusive interview. The prince told the BBC that he was delighted and frankly amazed that Diana was prepared to take him on. However, he upset his future wife when he was asked if they were in love. Diana replied, of course, while Charles quipped, whatever in love means a comment she was believed to find traumatizing. During the discussion, Diana debuted her 47,000-pound engagement ring from jewelers Garrard. It was a 12-carat oval blue salon sapphire, surrounded by 14 diamonds, set in 18-carat white gold. The breathtaking design, inspired by the brooch that Queen Victoria wore on her wedding day, was considered an unusual choice for royalty since it was not custom-made. The night before her wedding day, Diana stayed at Clarence House with her sisters and bridal party. According to journalist Penny Jenner's book, The Duchess, The Untold Story, Charles sent Diana a signet ring that bore his Prince of Wales feathers, accompanied by a note that read, I am so proud of you and when you come up, I'll be there at the altar for you tomorrow. Just look M in the eye and knock them dead. However, Diana's personal astrologer, Penny Thornton, claimed in an ITV documentary that the royal also had a devastating confession for his bride. One of the most shocking things that Diana told me was that the night before the wedding Charles told her that he didn't love her, Thornton claimed. I think Charles didn't want to go into the wedding on a false premise. He wanted to square it with her, and it was devastating for Diana, but on the face of it, the wedding was a dream come true for the couple. An excerpt from Lady Colin Campbell's The Real Diana Quotes the Bride it was heaven, amazing, wonderful, though I was so nervous when I was walking up the aisle that I swore my knees would knock and make a noise. The groom was also full of optimism, reportedly penning a letter to a friend reading. There were several times when I was perilously close to crying from the sheer joy of it all. The lavish ceremony was held at St. Paul's Cathedral, rather than Westminster Abbey, due to its larger capacity. Lady Diana was the picture of elegance as she arrived at the venue with her father, Earl Spencer. He had suffered a serious stroke in 1978 and then endured a long recovery, so his presence held significant importance to Diana. Months earlier, Buckingham Palace announced that Elizabeth and David Emmanuel, who had previously worked with Diana, had been commissioned to create the royal wedding dress. The recent fashion school graduates, in their late 20s, crafted her iconic gown from lustrous ivory silk taffeta and incorporated a huge petticoat made from 90 meters of tulle. Attention to detail was key, ruffles and bows were placed at the neckline and cuffs, while 10,000 pearls and sequins provided a glimmering finish. Diana's bridal look featured the longest train in royal history, measuring 25 feet. To ensure it was the perfect width, Elizabeth and David secretly measured the aisle of St. Paul's with a tape measure. The designers also created a spare petticoat and a silk skirt, which could be fitted over the original in case of emergency. Diana attended around 15 fittings and required five bodices to accommodate her rapid weight loss. When she arrived at her first dress fitting, Diana's waist measured 29 inches, but it had decreased to 23.5 inches by the wedding day. Eschewing royal tradition, Princess Diana chose to wear a tiara belonging to her father, John Spencer. Dating back to 1919, the Spank.